Hello, today we will have a brief introduction to anthropology and its major subfields. Anthropology is the study of mankind. The word anthropology is composed of two words. First, anthropos, that mean man, and logos, that you have also heard in psychology, that means knowledge. So, anthropology as an academic discipline, it means the study of mankind. We as human are complex and ever-changing species on the earth. Human complexity and diversity lies in our physical, emotional, social and cultural lives throughout the history. As human, we have body, we have brain, well like all the animals have, but we have a culture that is enriched with beliefs, rituals, customs and religious practices. And we live in a society having several social institutions and uh, these institutions influence us continuously. Then our location, our environment, climate, population density and the natural resources we have, they all vary across the globe. Therefore you can say anthropology is also known as a science of human and their culture and the science of human variations and diversity. Anthropology uh, study human diversity as I said earlier and it explores our existence and survival through time and space. Well, a history of mankind found human as the most resilient species on earth. We as human are resilient and adaptive. It also means that since the beginning, uh, you can say since the unknown history of mankind, and then the little known history of the mankind that you can say the primitive man and then the known history of mankind that you can say modern history of man throughout the history we as human beings did not vanish we faced everything that can destroy us but we exist today now <clears throat> there are questions how did it happen how did we originate how did we exist and then the most important, how we have changed over the course of time. These are the major questions that anthropologists investigate to understand human existence, diversity and survival. Now let's see what is anthropological perspective and what does it focus. Unlike other disciplines that are focused on one aspect of human lives, Anthropology study human life holistically. That means for anthro an anthropologist, human experience is situated in time and space and it is interconnected and interdependent with several other realities. Well, then anthropologists are interested in whole human, his past, his present, his future, the biology, culture, our society, language, religion and gender. So this is how the anthropology uh, is quite flexible enough. I mean, it, it can be called a kind of interdisciplinary qualitative social science. And there is also to be noted that since the focus and flexibility of uh, anthropology is documented, it does, it, it does not let you to be cultural bound. I mean, an anthropologist cannot be a culture bound uh, to, to his own culture and so it does not let you uh, be ethnocentric that is believing in one's own culture as proper culture and this is what that makes anthropology a challenging field. We may study several things in other cultures but that may seem weird to us if we are not able to put off the lens of our own culture that is that is internalized. Hence, the anthropologists are well trained to conduct an anthropological investigation. There are four major subfields in anthropology. Even though there is not a sharp division among these subfields, uh, and they can overlap at some times because uh, they share the similar goals to explore biology, society, and culture in time and space, but you can understand the difference through major research directions and methodology used in these fields. These fields are physical anthropology, archaeology, cultural anthropology and linguistic. 
in next slides uh, we will have a brief introduction of these subfields of anthropology archaeology is a subfield in anthropology and it studies human culture through the recovery and analysis of material remains and environmental data uh, such data uh, that is called archaeological data is used to trace the cultural practices in the past archaeological data set is also known as archaeological evidence and it may include different types of archaeological data that may be portable or non portable data we will learn in some other lecture about archaeology and its data physical anthropology it is it is also known as biological anthropology and it studies the biological and behavioral aspect of human beings and their vanished ancestors and the related non human primates particularly with an evolutionary perspective there are five uh, subfields in physical anthropology uh, they are interconnected and all of them contribute in understanding human evolution and variations the first one is human evolution uh, that is the study of the process of change from ape like ancestors to modern humans study shows that modern human evolved in about 6 million years second is primatology and uh, this is the study of non human primates and their behavior and their biology and evolution and uh, you know the primates uh, the mammals such as monkeys apes and humans third is human genetics it is a study of inheritance how genes are transmitted through generations further in human genetics there may be other fields such as clinical genetics developmental genetics but overall all these fields contribute to understand human nature and inherited traits fourth is human physical growth it is concerned with the size it means uh, it is about the variation in physical growth and the fifth one is human ecology that is about human relationship with uh, his natural environment next is linguistic anthropology but uh, before we talk about linguistic anthropology let us discuss a little bit about endangered language a language is said to be endangered language if there is a risk of its disappearance and there may be several reasons for this for example native speakers start preferring to speak other languages or there is too much mixing of the foreign language that is replacing several words then the population that speaks the language is diminishing gradually and then maybe some other reasons such as genocide violence cultural marginalization so uh, these are some of the reasons that can cause uh, a language um, uh, the risk of language to be to, of this to of disappearance anyhow uh, this is probably uh, the first interest of linguistic anthropologist Uh, uh who want to understand the structure of the language the knowledge language creates and it's used in everyday life and the reasons why a language is dying out so you can see that uh, one aspect is kind of historical that how uh, the languages are dying out and the second aspect is more about uh, the characteristics of the language and structure and its working and its function uh well in this way the linguistic anthropologists uh, they usually go for the language structure and its relationship with the culture and they ask uh, uh, some questions for example what is the structure of the language how the language is used to social interaction uh, how does it transmit cultural knowledge how does it impact cultural identity why a language is preferred to other how does the language change geographically how does language communicate gender role power and status how does language flourish or disappear so answer to all these questions or similar questions regarding language and culture uh, they fall under the scope of linguistic anthropology and now the cultural anthropology uh, another subfield of anthropology that uh, in my opinion it is very interesting and it is the most important field uh, cultural anthropology is also known as socio cultural or social anthropology uh, and cultural anthropologists examine patterns of human behavior thoughts and feelings they also look into human as producing and transmitting culture uh, but we should also look at the definition of the culture 
I am quoting one here uh, that uh, you will read on your textbook as well. Culture is a society's shared and socially transmitted ideas, values and perceptions that they use to make sense of experience. And these uh, uh, values and these ideas, they generate behavior. I mean, they are reflected in their behavior. So, as the culture is learned and transmitted through beliefs and practices, a cultural anthropologist may be interested in several systems within a specific culture that actually make up the whole social context of human behavior and experience. Hence, a cultural anthropologist may look into social, legal, religious, economic, political, healthcare and education systems simultaneously uh, because you, are, you have already learned that they are more concerned about the holistic picture. So the aim of the culture anthropologist is to get a holistic picture that is completed like a mosaic, several interconnected pieces of data. And for this purpose, usually uh, cultural anthropologists go for ethnography. Ethnography is an important component of cultural anthropology, uh, but we will learn it in another lecture when we will talk about research design in cultural anthropology. Okay, let's, let's practice some thoughts, I mean our own thoughts. Uh, you are seeing four pictures um, now at your screen. In this slide, uh, well, I must declare that all these pictures are Googled under Creative Commons lessons and I can use these pictures for academic purpose only. So have a look, think about it and write in your notebook the information about each culture that you got from yourself. Try to answer these questions, for example, why and how did you see them different from each other? How do you get this information about differences? And what makes you guess about these cultures while just looking at one picture from each culture? Well, uh, when you are, you are answering these questions, just reflect upon them later and uh, then you are most likely studying human diversity. And yes, one more thing. Uh, do make notes of the comparisons of each culture that you see in these pictures with your own culture. And also check uh, if you, your ethnocentric biases are there, if any. And then this will be a good practice to see how cultural anthropologists work. There are some other important subfields in anthropology, but they are in some way are connected with one or more of these four major subfields. For example, psychological anthropology, uh, it connects psychological topics such as related to mental health and well-being with anthropological concepts. And then medical anthropology that is about health, healing, folk medical system, health seeking behavior and practices. And we will talk about these important fields later on. Uh, but for now, thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe my channel. Thank you.